Well, good morning, Sonder fam. Happy Saturday. I am so glad it's the weekend. This was, I don't know about you, but this was a really long week. It started out Monday morning. I woke up thinking it was still Sunday, thinking I could still sleep. And then no, I had to go to work. And then Tuesday, I woke up thinking it was Thursday already. So it was like, this was just a really long week. So I am super, super, get, super glad um, that it's the weekend. And I am gl super glad to be here with you this morning, getting ready to set up our weekly journal for, um, I think this is going to be the third week in May. Goodness gracious, it is going by so fast. So welcome for those of you who are new and have not been here to um, one of our socials before. Is there anybody, this is your first time joining us for a social, you can just put like me or I'm new in the chat. Um, we do these weekly setups and we do monthly setups, which are basically just to kind of give you a jump start, knowing what to do with some of these little sections. And then of course we have our socials that where we um, will uh, work on journal prompts and those kinds of things. So um, welcome, Jess is new, welcome. And um, hopefully everyone has their May journal that they're working in. But you know, if you don't have the May journal and maybe you just signed up for Silk and Sonder and you're waiting for your June journal, you can always use um, sticky notes, scratch paper, you know, kind of like whatever, just to kind of, uh, you know, a blank journal, those kinds of things. And you can work through these different setups and these different prompts. So I do want to let you know, make sure that you set your chat to everyone. You'll notice a lot of times it defaults back to the host and panelist. Um, and if you do that, the only people who can see what you write are myself and my fabulous co-facilitator, Bailey, who is here with us from Tennessee. She is, she'll pop on and give a little wave. Hi, Bailey. Um, she'll be keeping an eye on the chat and, uh, I try to keep an eye on the chat, but unfortunately I upgraded to the latest version of zoom, which was a mistake because the chat goes by really fast. And I try to scroll back down to see what people write. And then it, every time somebody posts something in there, it pops back up to the, to the newest comment again. So it's a little frustrating, but Bailey, I know, um, is going to help keep an eye on the chat. If you have any questions, um, if you need me to go back to a slide, um, you know, those kinds of things. So, um, whoops, get my mouse working here. So just a, a few more, um, housekeeping community guidelines here. We try to keep this a very safe and supportive space for all of our Sonder fam. So we ask that you're kind and courteous to yourself and others, no promotions or spam in the chat. We respect everyone's privacy, no hate speech or bullying. We limit those repetitive product and accessory questions. The best place to ask questions about stickers and pens and those kinds of things with your journal is in Sonder Club in our app. Um, that way, lots of folks can give you feedback there. If you have any customer care inquiries like changing your address or um, a billing inquiry, those kinds of things, those all go to hello at silkensonder.com. Bailey and I don't have access to your account, so we can't look anything up. We can't help you with anything like that, but our folks in headquarters can. Just keep in mind they're a Monday through Friday, nine to five operation, and they're on the West Coast, so they're kind of in that time zone. So if you email them today, it'll take a few days before they are able to get back to you, but they they should get back to you. So also, <laughs> excuse me, um, just keep in mind that these socials are a tool to help elevate your emotional health um, through the power of community. And we have such a super supportive community here in Sonder Club. Um, but ultimately, you're responsible for your own emotions, well-being, and decisions. If something um, that we're working on isn't jiving with you, if you're not in the mood to maybe fill out a particular section, or um, the music isn't hitting you just right, or you, my voice isn't hitting you just right, um, do what you need to do. You can always mute me. You can mute the music. There should be closed captioning enabled so that you can have that if you want that. Um, the chat, like I said, sometimes gets going pretty fast. So sometimes people like to spend a lot of time participating in the chat, writing down ideas and thoughts for different areas. They take notes and sticky notes, and then they work on their journal later. Some people just ignore the chat and focus solely on working on their journal. Some people do a little mix of both. It's kind of whatever you need you take from this what you need. And I, I kind of liken this to a buffet. We give you a buffet of options, a buffet of ideas, um, different ways that you can um, use these different sections, but it's up to you to kind of decide what works and what doesn't. So kind of see it as a little experiment. There's really no right or wrong way to do your journal. This is your journal. 
should be totally for you, should not be a source of stress at all. Also want to let you know that um, you don't have to worry about that you're not on the microphone, you're not on camera. You can be there in your PJs um, with your kiddos, you know, coloring nearby. Everybody can be having a lot of noise in the background. We can't hear you. We can't see. So it's no no stress there, right? And again, you can participate as much or as little as you would like in the chat. So this month's theme has been really interesting to kind of see how folks dig into this idea of trust, right? It's kind of a, it's a, it's a deep topic, um, definitely something that we have been spending a lot of time in our journals kind of thinking about this concept of trust. What does it mean to us? Um, what happens when someone breaks our trust? How do we build trust? How do we rebuild trust? So kind of a, um, again, an interesting thing to kind of dig into a little bit. And I love seeing people's um, ideas and thoughts on that sometimes in Sandra Club as they're kind of working through. So for our agenda for today, we're going to do with these weekly setups, we do what we call a mind map where we dig into different areas of that theme. So obviously this month's theme is trust. So we'll be doing that first. And that's not anything that's actually printed in your journal. This is something you would use a blank piece of paper, um, a blank page, scratch the scratch pad, whatever like that to fill in. Then we do our rosebud thorn from the previous week um, to kind of give a little bit of reflection. And then we dive into those uh, weekly setup pages. And I always use these two little cartoons to... Um, remind us of a couple things. First of all, there's room for you here just as you are. If you want to celebrate with us, if great things are happening, please share those with us in the chat. We love to celebrate with our Sonder fam. Conversely, if life maybe is throwing some lumps and bumps in the road, um, kind of in that dip in the valley there, you can share that and we're here to support you um, as well. Sometimes it's just nice to know that other folks are um, thinking of you. And you'd be surprised a lot of times how often other folks are sharing the same struggles as you. So sometimes it can help to give a little bit of voice to that um, as we go through setting up for our week. And also the way that you feel matters. No emotion you feel is bad or unworthy. Nobody can tell you you should feel this or you shouldn't feel that. Um, we just, we're here for all the feels. And so let's dive into our first activity here. So again, this is the mind map blank page in your journal, um, post-it notes. It could be the scratch pad for the week, kind of like wherever makes sense for you to kind of write this down. And this month, we're really embracing the opportunity for trust to unlock greater insights about ourselves. So we're going to delve into the complexities of trust, exploring its role in your relationships, personal growth, and overall well-being. So we have four weekends this month. This weekend is number three. Um, and so this week, we're going to ask you to think about times that you trust for vulnerability. So week one was trust to forgive. Week two was trusting for strength. And this week is trusting for vulnerability. So as you think about that, how, how can you be vulnerable, right? And this idea sometimes of being vulnerable is a little scary. So think about things that you're sharing with other folks. Think about things um, how you're working to be more vulnerable in your life, because really that vulnerability is what helps us foster connections, right? And so maybe it's sharing something that you're working on, talking about something, maybe you've been working on a creative project that isn't, that's going great, or maybe isn't going great. Um, maybe you're, you know, you've been writing, but you're kind of in a stuck place. Maybe you've been painting or knitting or those kinds of things, something that you're working on, or maybe it's a work project. Um, you know, you're kind of working on, um, kind of sharing some of those struggles, what you're learning, those kinds of things. Um, asking for help with something. This is something that I sometimes struggle with in terms of vulnerability. Um, asking for help, right? It's kind of that um, when you, um, you know, it, it's showing that you're vulnerable, that you need help. Um, and so that can be something, maybe there's something that you've been tr trying to do yourself and you can think of someone you can maybe ask for help with that. Um, maybe share something that you're struggling with. Again, maybe it's a work thing. Maybe it's a personal thing. Um, those kinds of things. Maybe it's appreciating something you admire about someone else. I, I find this one really interesting, kind of thinking about things that you admire in another person and sharing that with them, kind of showing your vulnerability in terms of um, just saying how much you appreciate their sense of organization or their sense of style. Um those kinds of things and just getting out of your comfort zone, 
right? Um, and I like the little drawing here and the little quote about sometimes you have to drop your guard so your heart can breathe. And when we think about this idea of emotional vulnerability, it's about letting yourself be seen and known for who you truly are instead of how you might prefer to be perceived, right? So in the age of Instagrammable moments, right? How how are you really? How um, kind of showing your true self? So it means being open and honest about your own feelings, thoughts, and needs and vulnerable to the emotions and reactions of others. So of course I had to have a quote in here from Brene Brown um, because she's kind of the, the queen of this idea of vulnerability. And she says, staying vulnerable is a risk we have to take if we want to experience connection. So really this idea of making connections and this being vulnerable with other people. And I also found this little um, meme, which I thought is something that's super important to think about um, with ourselves, right? So the poor little bear here is saying, I feel sad and I feel ashamed that I do, right? I feel bad that I feel sad. Um, it's so hard to tell people. So everyone thinks I'm fine. So how often do you kind of push that back um, and uh, not tell people how you're feeling, not tell people that you're sad, not tell people that you're struggling, um, and then everyone thinks you're fine. And so then you're not getting that support. So again, this is kind of that thinking about who do you want to trust to share the kind of what's going on and then that idea of being vulnerable. And then the last little picture I thought was also an important piece of this, right? So these little wolves are saying, they're seeing this little pig and they're saying, so weak and vulnerable, let's put an end to his misery. And then they snuggle with him. Right. So think about times other people have been vulnerable with you and how have you reacted? Because that can be um, kind of a awkward situation sometimes, like you don't know how to respond. They're being vulnerable. You're not sure what to say. You're not sure what to do. So sometimes it's just that supporting. It's just that um, allowing them to be vulnerable, just like you would want them to allow you to be vulnerable. So I'll give you a little bit of time. I'll play some music, kind of cycle through um the little pictures here. And I saw someone was saying they upgraded Zoom and now every time um, they take a screenshot, it kicks them out. So um, yeah, the new Zoom is is a little frustrating. So I'm sorry for that. So hang in there, um, play a little bit of music. Feel free to share in the chat kind of what you're thinking along these lines. And we'll check back in here in just a few moments.
So hopefully you found some ideas of ways that you can use trust or experience trust by being vulnerable or this idea of vulnerability or responding to someone else's vulnerability. Again, like I said, sometimes when someone else is vulnerable with you, it can be hard to deal with because you're not quite sure how to respond. You're not quite sure um, what you want to do. So, um, but again, just kind of think of just being there for the person, just, um, you know, it's those hugs and the kind of like, you know, I'm so sorry, or, you know, thank you for sharing that with me. Thank you for being open and honest about kind of what you're thinking and just really thinking about how that helps you connect with that person. So ultimately this idea of trust for vulnerability can really help us with connections with others and letting people know sometimes that you can't necessarily do everything, that you aren't able to, um, you know, you're, you're not, yes, you're maybe superwoman, but you still have that vulnerability where you need some help and some time and some support from other folks, right? So let's dive in to our journals. Um, last The last week on page 44, um, where we have the weekly reflections, where we have our rose, our bud, and our thorn. So the idea with this on page 44 is that we think back across the week. A lot of times, if you're like me, you're constantly zooming ahead to the next week or the next day or the next task or the next thing. And we forget to kind of look back and think about what we just did this last week and how this last week impacted our lives. So the rose is something that's a highlight, something that's fun, something that's exciting, um, something that made you smile. The bud is something that is um, an emerging idea, a, a thing, something that you're looking forward to. And then the thorn is the challenge for the week, something maybe that was out of your control, something that was a little frustrating. Um, for me, my thorn this last week ha has been being sick. Um, my husband has given me, so lovely, um, a cold, and I'm still kind of getting over that. Um, it's mostly gone, but I still have the cough occasionally and kind of the, you know, the runny nose and those kinds of things. And I just, I don't like to be sick, um, which none of us do, right? Um, but that's just, it's always a little frustrating, always kinds of um, kind of puts puts a damper on things for the week. And then my bud is I scheduled um, a trip to Bellingham, Washington um, to see my bestest friend and her kiddos up there. Um, and so that's always exciting. So I'll be going in June to visit her for a week. So that's something that I'll be looking forward to. And then my rose for the week is I've had a new little bird friend at my bird feeder, the little guy in the bottom left which is a lazuli bunting, which I had not seen before with at my feeder. He's very pretty. He's blue. Um, he's got like a little blue head and a little red breast. And I was very excited to see my new little friends. So I do so enjoy um, my little birdies out there at the feeder. So feel free to share with us your rose, your bud, and your thorn. Um, again, I'll play a little bit of music and then um, we will check back in here in just a few moments.
Thank you for sharing in the chat some of your different rose, bud, and thorns. I saw folks um, looking forward to or having um, some gatherings with friends. We've got barbecues. It's, you know, that time of year where it's kind of, we it's nicer outside. We get to be outside, be with our friends, um, barbecues and crawfish boils and um, just kind of out and someone had said they were being a tourist in their own town with their hubby went on a date night in their own town and went to go find some different fun things and I think and Bailey had commented and I have the same issue um, like a lot of times we don't really do the touristy things in our own town right we're like oh that's right here I could do that anytime and it's it's kind of fun sometimes just to see um, some of the different things from the, that tourist lens. So super fun way um, to kind of spend some time. And then I saw some folks having some thorns. The getting sick is always, you know, kind of a thorn. Um, hopefully folks will get over colds and those kinds of things quickly. Um, work issues, right? Uh, I work in a school district. And so we're winding down next week is the last week of school. And then we get like a week break and then summer school starts. Um so it's like, we don't really get a break, but it's a little bit of a break. Um, but I know for our school folks, a lot of them are kind of, it's that final push to kind of get things done, get papers graded, all of that. So um, thank you all so much for just giving that little bit of time to reflect on your week, the rosebud and thorn. And these are also really good to look back on when you set up your next month, when you're reflecting back on the whole month, you can kind of go back and get a quick little summary of each week to see those rosebuds and thorns and kind of see, get a, a nice picture of how, how your week went. So thank you again for spending time doing that. So let's dive in and we will work on, we're going to work on page 46 and 47. This is going to be week 21 of the year, right? Um, and we're going to work on filling out these two pages. So the first little section we have here is, um, how you want to feel right up at the top. How do you want to feel? And this, I always say, is a really good way to set your intention for the week, how you want to show up for yourself and how you want to show up for others. So sometimes it's just one word. Sometimes it's a phrase. It could be an affirmation. It could be a quote. It could be stickers. 
Um, it could be a little drawing, kind of whatever works for you. But I like here's some different ideas of words like confident and worthy and courageous, radiant, calm, independent, fulfilled, vibrant. Um, lots of different ways that maybe you want to, sh again, show up for the week. Here's some examples of folks um, that folks had posted in Sonder Club. I want to feel enough. I want to feel ready, loved, healthy, 1% better, enthusiastic, happy. I like the, I want to feel more rested and energized, energized, less scattered and exhausted. All right. Those are good um, ways to kind of think about that. Or the one there down in the bottom where they have delight. And then they made kind of like a little acrostic poem there with the different words um, to kind of think about how they want to feel. So I'll play just a brief little song. Let you share with us if you'd like to your feelings in the chat and then we'll um continue on Thank you for sharing your word or words for this next week, this upcoming week. I see words like flexible, enjoy, balanced, content, back on track and headed forward, intentional. Um, Georgie's using the same mantra for the month, intentional and focused. Yeah, so if there's a word or if there's a mantra or a feeling that you use each week, you don't have to come up with something brand new for the week, right? You can have that same one um, that goes across, or maybe you want to focus on the theme of the month, right? And you want to say, maybe I want to feel trusting, or I want to feel trusted, right? Kind of thinking about that. So th now that you have this idea of how you want to go forward in the month, um, we're going to go down, drop down and look at those weekly major three goals. And again, remember, we accomplish our goals one step at a time. I love this little puppy going up the steps. Um, so as we think about these goals and we think about our to-do list, oftentimes our to-do list complements and it helps us achieve those goals. So one of the things some people like to do is they like to take the how they want to feel and then their goals, if they accomplish those goals, that will help them with their feelings. So here's some examples of things that folks have done. Um, they want to feel achieved and happy. So their, go their goals are eating well, staying active and practicing self-care. Um, there's another one they want to feel content. 
So they're going to delete negative things that no longer serve them, delegate, um, like parenting takes two, love that, uh, delight in the things that bring you joy. So those are kind of their goals, um, being present, being intentional, being joyful. Some people like to divide their goals up into work, body, and mind. So different areas to focus on. Um, I love the one I want to feel main character energy. So they're going to lean into their routines, take spot responsibility for how they want to feel and follow their peace. The other person up in the top, um, they want to feel informed and have more trainings at work. And then they don't have goals. They have a quote, a planned life um, is a, a oh, this is a planned life. I think that says it's a dead life, which is kind of an interesting um, way to look at it, but kind of an interesting um, idea to pop a little quote in there. And then here's some other examples of folks that people have done. They want to feel revived. And so they have a mind, body, heart, mind, body, soul, um, a self-care relationships and have to's. So again, lots of different, whoop, lots of different ways to look at that. Here's some more examples of things that people have done. Um, one person has a delete, delegate, and delight um, for their three goals. Um, again, mind, body, soul. One person has perspective and hope, and they have a little quote for each. So again, you can set these up as goals for the week. Maybe they're goals that you have for the month and you just bring those forward from week to week. Maybe you think, well, I have something, I have goals, but they're more monthly goals or they're yearly goals. So I'm going to repurpose this section to be maybe like quotes or maybe podcasts I want to listen to, movies I want to watch, TV shows I want to watch. Maybe it's books I want to read. Um as ways to get excited about spring and maybe get excited about summer as we're starting to slowly move into that um, for next month. Maybe it's three songs of the week, um, three topics you want to know about, three new recipes. Maybe you want to pop in a little bingo board here. Um, you know, just kind of think about how you would want to use that. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and show you the to do's because sometimes people like to tie the two of these together. So, again, here's some examples of how people have their goals. Um, one goal is finish writing chapter three. And so then they have write 500 words per day. Um, and, or then they have maybe like keeping up to date with daily trackers, filling out their trackers, um, filling out daily prompt on oh, that's So cute. They put in there the habities, which are the ones that are underneath there, which is the little word I came up with for the habit and activity section. Um, again, a bingo is always fun and you can put in the bingo, the things that are your goals, um, different little to do. Sometimes people like to do the Eisenhower matrix again, where they have it set up. So it's do decide, delegate or delete, or some people call it drop or some, um, you know, kind of like, what are some things that you're going to stop doing that are on there? And again, I'll cycle through these as I play some music and let you work on these two sections together. Um, a ta-da bingo. So that's another thing people in the to-dos like to have ta-das. So it's like, as they do them, it's like a ta-da, like I did this thing. Um, maybe it's a need, want, and hope. Maybe they divide the to-dos into work and home. I like the don't do this, do this instead. That's another thing that sometimes is nice. If we're trying to stop doing something, we need to put something in its place. So you can potentially have something like that. Um, again, to-dos, they have some self-care things, some health things, some home things, and some things they need to do for their school course coursework. So those different kinds of things. Again, different ways to repurpose. You can repurpose either of these sections with quotes. Maybe the to do is a to be. They want to be kind or be patient, be kind, be vigilant, and be honest. Um, again, they have a, some people write in a gratitude quote. Um, make a make a to not do list to check off what you didn't do. Bailey and I were laughing about this little um thing because it's, 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 it's a lot of negatives. It sounds like how sometimes the, you know, on the voting on the ballot, the way questions are worded, you're like, if I vote yes for this, what am I saying? But some of these are, you know, saying things like I didn't multitask or I didn't eat late at night or I didn't not drink enough water. I mean, you can obviously change these about, you know, it can make it to be drinking enough water or not doing things, um, at the last second. So I'll just cycle through these and let you kind of look at some of the different ways that people have used these areas. Think about what makes the most sense for you this week. Maybe you want to experiment with something new. Um, it's always kind of a good idea sometimes to see each week as a new chance to experiment with something that will help you uh, as you as you move forward 
in your week. And always remember if there's something that you set up this week and then by the middle of next week, you think, well, this isn't working for me. You could always change it up, right? Again, making it work for you. So I'll play a little music. I'll cycle through these slides. Feel free to let us know how you're using. If you have some goals, if you're putting those in the to, um, your weekly major three goals, you have some to do's, kind of what you're doing with that to do section, and then we'll check back in and continue on.
Thank you for sharing in the chat different ways that you're going to use these sections, different ideas of goals that you have for the week, those to-dos. I saw someone was saying that they have some um, random acts um, on their to-dos, doing things for the family, even if it's just, you know, maybe checking in with someone, um, again, maybe helping someone, allowing them to be vulnerable, being vulnerable with them, um, that idea of trust, just quick little things, um, you know, in intentional things that you want to do, um, you know, as you move forward. Yeah. And, um, using your goals as a need, want, and hope, right. I like that idea of, um, I had a, uh, used to have a supervisor that talked about things being necessary or required or delightful, right. Is doing, is doing this, is this something that's a necessity It's an absolute, or it's a delightful thing. I would love to be able to do this. I want to be able to do this, but, maybe time or whatever might not allow it, but it would be delightful if I was able to do it. So thank you for sharing those different things in there. So right under that is that habit activity section, which sometimes I call the the habities. Um, I just kind of combined those two words together one time when I was talking and it kind of stuck. People thought that was kind of a fun way to refer to it. But again, these are just different things that you want to do for the week. Some people will say, how is this different from the... Um, habits monthly wheel. Usually these are things that are very specific to the week uh, that you have ahead. And maybe there are things you only want to do maybe once or twice, or maybe it's um, kind of an experimental thing. You want to try out this new habit and see how it works, if it actually is something that's going to stick, if it actually is something that's making an impact. So you can see different ways that folks have done things. You can see like the little circled one up there with the night walk with the audiobook is someone who kind of did a um, what um, they talk about in Atomic Habits called um, habit stacking, where you have kind of two different habits tied together. And so you can kind of um, have to have the two for one, right? Um, and so they, they're going for a walk, they're getting some movement in, but they're also listening to an audiobook. So a fun um, way to kind of do that. Uh, and then, then the numbers where it says goals, it's kind of like, that's how many times you want to necessarily do that during the week. Um, some people like to use that and it's inspiring. Some people, it stresses them out. So they just kind of cover up the goals section and they don't think about it or they don't necessarily write something in. So here's some different ways, you know, doing something creative, taking a walk, quiet personal time, social media break. Uh, again, those kinds of things that you just kind of want to put in for the week. And then here's some just some examples from our Silk and Sonder Instagram account where there's some different um, things about like getting 15 minutes of movement in or doing something that brings you joy, staying hydrated, decluttering and tidying up, those kinds of things. So these are some fun ways to do that. And what I think I'll do is I'll also, um, you know, think think about... Um, as you, uh, as we're working on this section, let's go ahead and flip over to page 47. Cause again, I'm going to kind of combine some things together. So you have some time to work on it. Um, and then you go up here. So over on page 47, we have the meal plan, which I think this is one of our most, uh, frequently repurposed sections because some folks say, well, I don't really track my food or I don't really plan out my food, or I have an app that I do that on. So I'll show you some examples of ways that people have, um, repurposed this little section, different things that they've done. Maybe it's their clothing plan for the week. Um, I like the meal plan for my soul. So they have some different questions that they're asking themselves. Um, maybe it's doing a symptoms or a health tracker. Um, sometimes maybe it's just tracking things like um, fruits and vegetables or tracking um, maybe like how much sugar, grams of sugar that you've had for the day. Um, maybe it's a word of the day that you're tracking. You're tracking the Wordle, um, tracking your chores different kinds of things here. So here's some examples of how people have used these different areas for the different things for the meal plan. So what I'll do is I'll just kind of go back and forth through our um, habits and activities and our meal plan, work on that, and then we'll um, keep moving forward.
Okay, so hopefully you have some ideas for how to use those two sections. Um, I know that sometimes I was thinking, uh, you know, if you want to maybe focus on something like do one thing that brings you joy each day, maybe in your meal plan, you write down what that thing was each day that brought you joy. Um, again, if you want to do um, get movement in, maybe in your meal plan, you write down the one thing that you did what to do to get the movement in. You parked further away, you took the stairs, uh, went for a 15 minute walk those kinds of things to give you some inspiration as you move forward. So these last three sections here, I want to go through on page 47. We have the mind body health plan, um, which really uh, can kind of be used for whatever you're wanting to track or things that you want to remind yourself of. I love the one up in the top. They have keep it fun and they have some fun little things and the little circle around there, things that they can do. Um, what I am loving today. So maybe different things that you are loving uh, on each day. Uh, girls just want to have fun and they have some kind of fun things in a little bingo, of course, because we love our bingo here at Silk and Sonder. Um, the one down on the bottom, they have like movie, text a friend, wash my hair, thank a mentor, fitness, serve others, start fresh. Um, I like the one down in the bottom middle where they have my plan and then they have my reality. Right. So it's kind of like this is what I'm planning to do for mind and or body. Um, but then this is what actually happened. Um, and then we have the one with bills. Right. What bills do I need to pay um, on particular days or things that I need to do? You could also do it as a money tracker. Maybe if you're tracking how much you're spending each day uh, to kind of keep an eye on that, this would be a place you could potentially use that for um, wordles, cleaning list, um, a feel and a need. I feel this way. So I need this thing. How did I nourish my mind, body, and soul? Um, I love the person down on the bottom, right? They have, you know, every day is like a national something day. So they have like national Spider-Man day, national ice cream sandwich day, national watermelon day. So you could always enjoy whatever the day is for that week. And then the shopping list, again, could be just a shopping list, right? Or maybe you want to have your evening routine down there for the things that you do. They have good night and then they have shower, moisturized teeth, right? They have kind of a list of the things in their evening routine. Lots of different ways to do bingo, reminding themselves no unnecessary spending, um, giving themselves some self-care ideas. I like the, the little little shopping bag they have, love yourself too. Um quotes, packing lists, word of the day. Again, lots of different things that I'll kind of cycle through. And I did want to mention, it's also good to take screenshots of these sometimes so that you can kind of go back and see some of the different ideas that folks have come up with. And then that I am loving box is just really for anything that you're really enjoying this week or you're planning on enjoying this week. Um, I'm loving simplifying the confidence I'm feeling, um, discovering my creativity, uh, rest, recharge, and refill my cup. So different ideas for that. So I'll play just a little bit of music. We'll come back, we'll wrap things up and then see how you're feeling for diving into the week ahead.
Okay. So hopefully you're feeling pretty good about going into this next week, this 21st week of the year and feeling like things are set up. You have what you need. Um, you kind of have things set up. Yeah. Peg is saying she's loving sunny and warm weather. Absolutely. It has been just lovely here in Denver, although we're supposed to get maybe a little more rain, which is fine because we can always use a little bit of rain. Right. But um, love that. Oh, Melanie, congratulations. This is I'm loving my spouse. Monday, we celebrate our 23rd anniversary. It has not always been easy, but glad we are in this together. Yeah. Love that. Congratulations. Yay. Um, actually our 23rd anniversary is in September. So right there along there with you. Yeah. And I love that she says it hasn't always been easy. Of course it hasn't. Right. Like, and it's always interesting. People think like marriage is not supposed to be work like marriage can be definitely a lot of work right so thank you all so much for joining us here today as we set up our week we love to see if you share your weekly planner you see all these examples are ones that we got from our Sonder fam in Sonder club so if you feel the desire to share you're not required to obviously but if you'd like to we love seeing those and you never know who you might inspire with your post so um don't be afraid you might want to maybe be a little vulnerable um that idea of trusting trusting the Sonder fam trusting the the process of sharing with others so that you can inspire them I did want to mention we do um, our Elevate Planner. It says pre-order. I think the discount code still works, but they did say they have those in-house now. These are a lovely little hard hardcover. Um, they go, it's for the whole year, right? Different planner. And we haven't even seen these yet. They're supposed to, I think, maybe be sending these out to us, but we haven't seen them. So those are out there. So if you want to order those, we do still have the stickers. I saw in an email, they only have 100 of the sticker sets for June left. So if you want to order those, um, make sure that you um, get those ordered. And then they also have a sticker set, which is kind of a, a generic um, kind of works for any month, not necessarily themed to the month color. Those are still there. And we do still have the um, refer a friend, um, the, the annual subscription, and then you will get a survey um, to kind of, um, to, to ask you what kinds of things you'd like to see in some of these surveys. So yeah, Heather, I, Heather says, I'm loving the different vibe today of a quieter chat. No better or worse, just a little more relaxed. Yeah, sometimes that scroll of the chat gets a little intense. So I think everybody was really hunkered down and working on their journal, getting everything ready for that next week. So thank you all for being here. Um, Bailey's popping lots of links into the chat. She has the YouTube link in the chat. Um, Thanks, Melanie, for sharing with us in the chat. Um, you know, that she says she shared more um, this week than usual. Thanks for allowing me the space to let go of things that have been stuck inside. Yes, we are here for all of that. And sometimes just having that space to just kind of share with folks what's going on and then we can move forward. So again, thank you all so much for being here. Have a fabulous rest of your Saturday. Have a great weekend. Um, and we will check back in. We will see you again, hopefully, at another one of our socials soon. So take care, everyone. Truly.